Weird Al ain't as good as Rucka Rucka Ali. <laughs> Zero stars. I don't know if it's that apparent, but uh, yeah, before I got into Rucka Rucka Ali, I was into a lot of Weird Al Yankovic music, and uh, I still listen to it. And in fact, this movie did make me actively want to go back and re-listen to some of my favorite songs of his. So that, I think, goes to show the staying power that the man has. Even when he's not really doing that much, now he's just been touring as of late. Not even performing a lot of his parodies, he's been going around performing some of his original stuff. It goes to show that even when he's not putting out albums consistently, the guy is still well known and still pretty well revered after all this time. But as for the movie itself, uh, it's from Funny or Die, which I think has been kind of hit or miss over the last few years but it was based on a joke trailer they did years ago. And it was basically the same setup. It was that it's a joke biopic movie, and you have Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter, playing Weird Al Yankovic. The trailer was funny, and that was all the way back in like, what, 2010 or so? Finding out that they were gonna make this into a full-length movie definitely was kind of a, okay, well, let's see how that plays out. I mean, after all, we're living in a day and age where you, you see something, you swear to God it's not a real movie, and then it turns out that it is. I mean, look at the fucking Banana Splits horror movie. They ended up making that a real thing. And, uh, you know, in just a couple of months, we're gonna get uh, a Winnie the Pooh horror movie, and allegedly we're gonna get a Grinch horror movie, too. Generally speaking, when I saw the actual trailer for the movie, I was like, eh, this, this could be good, or it could be just a really one-joke thing. Watching the movie, I liked it. For the most part, I thought it was very entertaining. Because I did a video talking about these kind of satire musical comedies like a couple months ago, I talked about CB4, Walk Hard, and Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping. Um, and out of all of those, this movie feels kind of like Walk Hard, but instead of the Johnny Cash story and Ray and movies based on those like old music legends, like that movie was kind of poking fun at. It was basically the main spoof of Walk Hard was the Johnny Cash story with a little bit of elements of Ray, which was about Ray Charles. This movie kind of feels more like it's taking the piss out of the super over dramatic ones. Like the one it kept reminding me of a little bit was Bohemian Rhapsody. And that's mainly because most of the posters for this movie are blatantly parodying Bohemian Rhapsody. Just like in Bohemian Rhapsody, they dub over the main actor with the actual musician. Uh, in that movie's case, they obviously dubbed over Rami Malek with um, Freddie Mercury. And in this movie, they, they blatantly dub over uh, Daniel Radcliffe with Weird Al singing. Uh, and it, it, at first it's a little distracting, but then when you get more into the movie, you just kind of accept it. You're like, okay, yeah, sure. They do take a few things from Weird Al's real life. They take a few elements, like the fact that he moved to LA, shared an apartment with three other guys who became his bandmates. That part was true. Uh, Dr. Demento being um, a big part of Al's career when he was just starting out. Uh, but what they do here is they basically warp it into this big spoof on the typical formula for these biopic movies. They had a rough childhood, their parents didn't like them, they were picked on at school, or society looked down on them, and then they had a musical gift, and then they came across this record executive or someone in the industry who gave them a platform, and then they skyrocketed to the top with a first big hit song and a, and a huge album, and then they got into drugs, or they started hanging out with the wrong people and they hit rock bottom, and then they had some kind of comeback, and then there's some kind of third act falling out, and then, you know, that the movie ends with the, the big celebration of the the thing that put them back into the spotlight and that's pretty much what this movie does with a couple of twists and turns one of the things I loved about this movie was despite the fact that there's a few things that are from Weird Al's actual life it just runs with the fact that most of it is bullshit <laughs> like I mean Weird Al had a loving family who supported his accordion playing life when he was a kid but in this movie, they, they give him the typical, like, his parents looked down on him and told him that the accordion was the devil's music. It kept reminding me of the gags they would do in Walk Hard, where you have characters, after the main character hit it big, there's still characters saying shit like, you know, oh, you're never gonna make it, you gotta stop chasing that musical pipe dream, even though they already have, like, five songs in the top 100. Like, that, that was funny. I really like that. Also like how, again, they just exaggerate the hell out of some of this stuff, like, Dr. Demento, <laughs> played by uh, Dwight from The Office here. They pretty much just make him the typical kind of like wild card music executive who's like friends with almost everyone in the industry. And that was fun. There's a, a scene very early on where he takes them to a pool party 
and uh, you have a bunch of people there, like some of them are musicians and other ones are kind of like just known for being personalities. Uh, and there's a bunch of uh, cameos, like you got Jack Black showing up and Jack Black is awesome as always. Uh, but like in terms of some of the people they're playing, like Conan O'Brien was Andy Warhol. And like, oh God, there was someone else. Uh, one of the Lonely Island guys was Pee Wee Herman. There was somebody there as Tiny Tim. Uh, Alice Cooper, Devo, Divine, Elvira. The only thing that was missing was fucking, um, what's his name? Uh, Mr. Bean and Ernest P. Worrell. I know you could argue that wouldn't make any sense, but it's weird, the Al Yankovic story. Does it really need to make sense? Also, what's great about that scene, this is probably the hardest laugh I got in the whole movie, was the bass player from Queen, and they literally just call him Guy from Queen. <laughs> uh, he shows up and he's like, like, kid, you're never gonna make it in the music industry. I wanna see you do a parody of one of Queen's songs. I don't think you can do it. Um, and then he does a parody of another one bites the dust with another one rides the bus. And, you know, he, he becomes the hit of the party. And then the guy's like, uh, like, kid, we're gonna be playing this event called Live Aid soon. Uh, we want you to be the opening act. We want you to play with us. And then uh, Weird Al, Daniel Radcliffe just goes like, Pass! <laughs> and then everyone just starts pointing and laughing at the guy from Queen and Jack Black and I, that was funny. That really did make me laugh. Another example of how you know the movie's obviously full of shit and they just, they just run with it and have fun with it is there's a plot point where they say that Weird Al's biggest hit was Eat It and it was an original song and then Michael Jackson came along and ripped it off with Beat It. And uh, the, there's a scene where like uh, Al gets the news about Beat It coming out and how it ripped off Eat It. Uh, he's in like a restaurant and he just starts like smashing the, the telephone like in anger. That was really funny. And there's like a, a line where it's like, oh, like, oh, Beat It? So what, is it about like eggs or something? Like that, that got a laugh out of me. So speaking of, the guy who calls Al to let him know this is actually played by Weird Al himself. He plays like an executive. Uh, and again, they're parodying that trope in these movies where there's the record executives who are just like, this will never work, this will never be famous. Basically like uh, Mike Myers character in um, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. It's kind of like that. It's, it's Weird Al and uh, his brother played by Will Forte. Um, and they basically are just there to be the executives who at first don't like him and say, this music will never catch on. And then later on, after he like scores it big, then all of a sudden it's like, you're hired. You got a record deal, kid. You're the next big thing. And one of the biggest examples how you know this movie is full of shit is uh, I don't think Weird Al and Madonna had a sexual relationship. And I especially know that Madonna wasn't kidnapped by Pablo Escobar. And then Weird Al went in with a machine gun and saved her. <laughs> that's that's the kind of weird shit that happens in this movie, but because the movie just runs with its insanity, you're just like, fuck it, yeah, sure, why not? Um, sometimes the movie does take itself a little too seriously, and it comes off a little bit like, eh. Like, sometimes when they do it to comedic effect, it's really funny, but then there's other times where you're just like, okay, this is a little needlessly depressing. It's to the point where it's not even like, oh, look, the fact they're taking it so seriously makes it funny. It just kind of comes off like, okay, like, this is a little too much of a fucking downer. Like, another thing, and this is extremely minor, but sometimes you can see jokes coming from a mile away because they're so obvious. Like, near the end of the movie, you set up that somebody says that they're from the Amish, so you just know that it's gonna be leading into an Amish paradise moment where, oh, that's how Al got the inspiration for Amish paradise. Just like I said earlier with the pool party and Madonna and all this other stuff, there's a bunch of uh, people playing some of these famous musicians, uh, and most of them do a pretty good job. Not to spoil too much, but uh, there is one near the end that's a reference to the fact that Prince always turned down <laughs> having Weird Al do a parody of his music. That was kind of funny. I don't want to spoil the context, but it, just the fact that they were able to sneak that in, it's just like, aw, well, that's that's pretty good. So I gotta say, I, I didn't really know how to feel when in the middle of the movie, they just had uh, Weird Al come out and say he was releasing a parody of The Wall and how it was like a big inspiration for him and that he was gonna be selling it on Spotify. I didn't know how to feel about that. That just felt like it was coming right out of nowhere. It felt like it kind of interrupted the flow of the movie. Uh, and this is totally a real thing that happens, and I'm not just making it up for the sake of doing this review at all. No way. It's, it's absolutely a thing that happens. Overall, I can definitely see people saying that this is a one-joke movie, because by all accounts, it kind of is. Um, but it was a joke that I thought was consistently funny all the way through. It was funny to see them take the typical biopic formula 
and just kind of do a big exaggerated spoof where the joke is that none of it happened. Like, I mean, if you want to see the actual Weird Al story, there's plenty of documentaries and just, or just look it up yourself. It's like, this movie wasn't meant to be a, a diehard, like, biopic movie. Just like fucking Walk Hard. It's not meant to be a real biopic movie. It's meant to be a comedy. And for the most part, I thought it was funny. There's a few parts that kind of drag, and I could definitely see people saying that, oh, it's just every other biopic movie. But honestly, I thought it was funny, and I'm glad to see that other people who like Weird Al sat back and thought it was funny. So yeah, and again, it made me want to go back and listen to some of those Weird Al songs. So it succeeded in that. It did feel like a big love letter to Weird Al, because I mean, he did write the thing and he produced it. So. Yeah, I mean, if you like Weird Al, I'd say give it a shot. It's on Roku for free. I mean, if you like movies like Walk Hard, it's pretty much in the same league as that. It's like, it, it's dumb, but it knows it's dumb, and it wears it on its sleeve. And I definitely want to do more videos like this in the future, some more kind of off-the-cuff MC Swigga videos like this. I have a couple that I really want to do. I want to do a video talking about, like, the history of parody musicians on YouTube because in like the late 2000s, early 2010s, there was a huge thing and obviously go down like where they are now because there's a bunch of these people who either went away or they eventually moved on to other things. So I want to do off the cuff swig of stuff like this every once in a while. And since I did a video earlier in the year talking about movies like this with CB4 and Popstar and Walk Hard, I felt like, you know, talking about this movie that's kind of about the OG parody musician. But yeah, as always, look forward to more Swigga content. We got parody songs coming out, some original tracks dropping. We got an album coming in December. We got more Swigga game reviews, BNN, uh, Assholes React, you name it. It's all coming out. MC Swigga out, y'all. Ruckus Knuckles for life. Okay, peace.